My guest says, sky's the limit when you're not walking in a love deficit. He teaches how to fill up on the love of Father God. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. <laughs> I so love the rarefied air of heaven, and I believe that as you're watching me, that rarefied air is going to be transported to you. And I'm so excited to talk to Leif Hetlin. Uh, Leif, as I told you at dinner last night, that you provoke me to jealousy. And after all, the Bible says the Gentile is to provoke the Jew to jealousy. <laughs> And how does he provoke me to jealousy? He has tapped in to what is known as the immersion or the baptism of love. And as far as I'm concerned, the Bible says God is love. And have you noticed there has been an emphasis since I've been a believer on Jesus, and rightfully so, and on the Holy Spirit and rightfully so. But we're coming into a season, and, and God's proving it to us prophetically, we're coming into a season in which Father God wants you to experience His love. And what do I mean by it's a prophetic time? Because do you remember the Brownsville Revival in Pensacola, Florida? Guess when it started? Father's Day. And do you remember Toronto, the great outpouring in Canada, the airport church? What do they emphasize? The love of the Father. Let the oil flow. Now, you came from a home that displayed love, but yet you still had an orphan spirit. What is an orphan spirit? Well, an orphan spirit is primary person who lived a life without having a security, they don't have a love, value, and purpose. Uh, an individual, like in my own life, where I had a good father, and it is possible actually to have a perfect father like we find in the Bible and end up with a prodigal son and a prodigal brother. And, and I had a uh, experience of being both a prodigal son because of an abuse that took place when I was 12 years old. Uh, I ended up as a prodigal son with an orphan spirit. I didn't have a place of security with God or with anybody else. And I didn't know how to receive love or to give love away. And I didn't have a proper value system that only a father can give. And as a result, I didn't find my purpose in life for many, many years. Now, there are many fatherless people in the world. In the United States, what, what did you tell me? Well, 40% of all the children in America, they will live in a home where they do not have a father around. And just even to know in prison, the majority of the people in prison, one example that I thought was interesting, Sid, was that uh, during Mother's Day, they hallmark the make of these beautiful cards. Uh, they send out cards to all the prisoners mm -hmm. to, to write to Mama. And 5,000 cards, all of them were gone. But Father's Day came along, and they thought we need to do the same things for Father's Day. And over 4,800 cards was not sent mm -hmm. out. That's very telling. Now, interesting enough, Leif comes from four generations of Pentecostals. However, he became a Baptist pastor, and because he had this orphan spirit, uh, he thought he could please God by good works. And you burned yourself out, but you ended up at a meeting of uh, the Toronto group that was in England, and tell me about that. Well. Uh I would say 1994, I was pastoring uh, First Baptist Church in Sunnes, Norway. 
And then my elder, he came, came back, back and, and somehow I saw something had taken place in his right life. And he said, hey, you need to go over to England. There is a group of people, and I know it's kind of a strange, but they can pray for you. And uh, I can be honest, I first thought I don't need this, but I saw the fire in his eyes. So I went with him over to England and I showed up and it was safe because I went to a Baptist church. And on that Tuesday, there was a group of people that had just come from Toronto. And uh, when they started to share their testimony, they were similar like me. I mean, they were burned up people, tired people, weary people, that all of them had a fresh touch of the Father's love. And uh, so I stood in line that Tuesday as a Baptist pastor. More of you. The next moment I was laying on the floor and I was thinking, what would my Baptist members think if they see me rolling on this floor? You would lose your church. <laughs> I would lose my church, yeah. So, and, and the interesting thing, when I came back again to my Baptist church after this meeting, I was just preaching so like normal. But now, in the next moment, people in my Baptist church, they started to fall down on the floor or resting in the spirit. And we didn't even have a language for it. It looked like it was an accident that was taking place. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Do you feel like you're at home? Uh, do you have an orphan spirit? Are you burned out on religion? Life had an encounter with the baptism, the immersion of love that transformed his life, transformed his marriage, transformed his family, and allows him to minister to Muslims because of this great love that is poured out from God the Father. I want you to experience that. Don't go away, we'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. One new man, the convergence of Jews and Gentiles, the two becoming one new man in Yeshua. When Jews and Christians become one new man in Messiah Jesus, we will experience a move of God such as the world has never seen. Healings, blind eyes opened, diseases removed, miracles, supernatural events, the dead literally raised, multitudes saved, the final and greatest revival before the return of Messiah. If we want to experience God's glory right here now on earth, then we need to knock down the wall of division that separates Jew and Gentile. If you want to experience an explosive outpouring of God's Spirit, God's love, God's power, then log on to www.sidroth.org to learn more about the one new man. One spirit, one faith, one new man. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Leif Hetland. And uh, Leif, uh, you had an experience in the year 2000 with the Father's love. Tell me about that. Well, in year 2000, I had just gone through a very difficult time. And I was invited actually by a group of leaders. It's just gonna kind of be a casual setting. And uh, I showed up in that meeting, didn't have any understanding what is about to take place. And I had had a baptism of water experience that represented death, burial, resurrection. Right. I even had a baptism of the spirit experience where I received power to live the Christian life. But this baptism of love, I had never even heard of as a Baptist a pastor. And uh, it's, it was an you. amazing time when Dennis Jernigan, right he is a, he is a well-known musician. We were just a small group of people in a room and he said, uh, Leif, I have this song for you and it is a daddy song. And he started to sing this song, it was just for me. And it was like Father God himself singing over me. And I went down on the floor and I laid there and it was like liquid love just flowing up and down my body. And then the next moment when I was laying on the floor, I just started to weep. And I could feel the pain of that 12 year old boy that had been abused. 
but suddenly it was like the love just took it away. All that pain was gone. And in the next moment, I'm back to a 15-year-old boy. And it was liquid love that went back to incidences that took place where there was love deficit. And it was like a journey that he took me through. And for about a two-hour period of time, as I was laying there in this liquid love, just continued to flow up and down into my body, into my soul, and into my spirit. When I came up that very place, there was a word that he spoke. He says, Leif, you're my, and you're my beloved. You're my beloved son. I love you. What did it mean for God, for Father God to say to him, Leif, you are my beloved son, and I love you. What would it mean for Father God to say that to you? What did it mean to you? Well, for me, I, I knew that Jesus loved me. I could come to the cross. I knew that the Holy Spirit, and I had learned to be comfortable with the Holy Spirit. But when the Father himself opened up his arm and says, I love you, I am well pleased with you, pretty much what happened was that it's like I have an F on my report card, and no matter how hard I was working, I never did enough. And, and yet you had a good, natural father. I had a good natural father. I mean, father. what happens with someone that has an absentee father, or someone worse even, that has an abusive father, or, or, or someone that has a father uh, that's home and never embraces them, never says, I love you. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens with that person? If you had a good father, what change did it make in you? Well, I, I was totally transformed. I think the first change that I saw, first of all, I was weeping. I'm from Norway and even have a nice Norwegian sweater I see. On today. It's nice looking. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I wanted to give some advertisement <laughs> for my country. But one of the things that is not good being a Norwegian or European, we don't show emotions. We are from a very cold uh, uh, temperature, yes. and we learn how to protect. And similar spiritually speaking, there's not a whole lot of emotion. And I couldn't cry I before. So now I just started to weep. And when I came home and I saw my wife, I just realized that it was not just me that had to perform, but they had to perform. Because if I had that kind of expectancy from Father God, I realized what I had done towards them. So when I then started to express to them how much I love you and how sorry I was, the same to my children. I went to each one of my children and I wept. And I started to tell them, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all those areas in my life that I was not comfortable with love because those area I was not comfortable with God. And as a result of that, the very God himself, that's what I had expressed to them. And then they saw this and God in me. And I repented, I made things right. And I started to live my life like I had a home. And I created like heaven on earth. I created a home for my family. And it was just totally transformation for all of us. Today, did, did your wife see a difference in you the moment you came back, or did it take a while for her to trust your behavior had I changed? I think a combination of both things. I think that she was so used to the high achiever and mm -hmm. that always was going and, and always achieving, and now you're coming back to be a lover. That's her husband that she used to just even lean towards me, want to cuddle, and I kind of froze up. Mm. And today I go around kissing people, hugging people, yeah. loving people. So it's almost like, is this just an act or is this a hey, Has it continued even till today at your home? I'm oh, curious. yes. Uh, Ten years into this journey, and I've traveled all over the world doing these Father Loves You conferences, actually. But also in my home, in my office, every single one in my office. We are family when we are together. And yet, in 2002... He had an encounter with God that showed him something he didn't realize. Mm. Tell me about that. Well, I still didn't know to the root that I was living with his orphan spirit, that I have still some of that orphan heart. I was comfortable with love, but at that moment I became a son. And ever since, I've been living with sonship. I've told people that uh, uh, there is many different ships, and I had an apostleship or stewardship and discipleship, but all the ships got shipwrecked, and there was only one ship left, and that was sonship. And that was actually what Jesus did. He only did what the Father was doing. He only said what the Father was saying. So I started at that moment, and it was an encounter that I had. It lasted about four and a half hours with Father God, with His Son. And there was, a, there was almost like there was a surgery taking place in my soul. And I realized at that moment that I am not an orphan. He said, I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you in John 14, 18. And that's what he did. He came to me. And on a consistent basis since then, I've lived my life like a son, 
And when I do that, the dove remains there. I don't have to live like an orphan with pigeons all around. And that's the difference between pigeon religion or when you're a son like Jesus, the dove remained upon him. When, when you walk in this supernatural love, evangelism is easy, isn't it? It is. It is, and I don't have any agenda when I go to people. So you're not going to evangelize them, you're going to love them. I'm there just to represent His love. I I exist to receive love and give love. That's what I exist. And that's what had changed in my life. I have become a lover that just exists to receive that is love and give it away. So then some of the miracles and everything else that flows out of that, it opens up a tremendous door. People, they don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. And I do believe that love is the language the blind eyes can see and the deaf ears can hear. How many Muslims, by loving them, have uh, come to know the Messiah over the last decade or so? Uh, We have seen literally hundreds of thousands of of, of Muslims having an encounter with Jesus and experiencing Jesus. Without this supernatural love, how many do you think would have? I I do not uh, know even if I could count it on my hands because it's never been any discussions or arguments. All I do is to love on them and then in the next moment show them Jesus and they see the Jesus that is in me. So I have no agenda. I love Muslims and I love any other faith. That's just just what I do. I just exist to go there and love on them. Uh, Leif, there is such a sweet presence of God on this set right now. When we come back, If it's okay with you, I would like Leif to pray that you have an immersion of this love. Don't you dare go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. When Leif Hetland received God's baptism of love, it transformed his marriage, his relationship with his children, and revolutionized his ministry. Now he wants you to receive the baptism of love and healing. Call now and get this two-part audio CD teaching by Leif Hetland, Healing the Orphan Spirit, yours for a donation of $24. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1367. Through Leif's teaching, you will learn to discern the signs that you or someone you love has an orphan spirit. Understand that the baptism of love is the answer to the orphan spirit. Get set free from anger, impatience, frustration, and failure. Transform your relationships with family, friends, and others. Enter into a deep intimacy with Daddy God. Hear God's voice and experience His love. Watch the heavens open with signs, wonders, and miracles. And Leif speaks an impartation to you for the baptism of love. We pour love in, and when love moves in, fear moves out. And when people are free from fear, the very root of this orphan heart is being broken and they become a beautiful beloved son and daughter and they live their life that way. Don't miss out on getting this two-part audio CD teaching by Leif Etland, Healing the Orphan Spirit. Yours for a donation of $24. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1367. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1367 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here with Leif Hetland. And Leif, you teach a lot about the Garden of Eden. And originally that was meant to be Adam's home. Tell me about that. Well, before sin came in, God had a perfect plan and he still have a perfect plan. He created a very beautiful place. And and I've been very interested in going back to that place because I believe that Jesus, the second Adam, that's what he came to restore us back again to this garden. And it was a perfect place where they could hear his voice. They could see the Father's face. They could feel the Father's love. They could experience his presence. And they were living in his pleasure. And that's what Eden means, pleasure. Or delight. So they were living in his pleasure. So I lived my life for so long without experiencing Eden. I didn't have it in my life. I didn't have it in my marriage. I didn't have it in, in, in my ministry. It was more a place that I was hoped I was going to go to than something I could experience on a daily basis with Father God. As you walk in this love, uh, you meet so many people with orphan spirits. How can someone know if they uh, have an orphan spirit? 
I think that often the orphan spirit is often manifested either through religion. You will find people, they are striving, working. It is through religious activity, hoping that if they do this religious activity, that, that Father God is going to be pleased with them. So that's one way. The other one is often rebellion. One says, give me, give me. Value God, value people, their spouse, uh, the people they work for. They value them for what they're going to do for you instead of, of who people are. And it's more like a prodigal son. That's his value system. Or the brother, it's look what I am doing for God. The whole value system is look what I am doing for God instead of what I'm doing from God. So I think that that's two major ways that you can see an orphan spirit. There's either a rebellion against any authority or rebellion against the system. You find it in church all over, and they hope just to have a visitation of Papa God, but they do not have provision, they don't have security, they don't have a value system of just being. They always have to do something, hoping the Papa is going to be well pleased. Do you have a habitation of God 24-7? Yeah, I will say so. There is times that uh, I recognize that the presence of God is not there, and then automatically right there and then the father hunger that is in my life I, I just want to come home so I live my life like a son tell tell me <laughs> the miracles going on I mean it, it, it it's phenomenal these miracles tell me in Pakistan just let's pick one that I know about uh, the the girl that had no color in her eyes Tell me about her. Now, I, I will never forget that face. It was only two months ago. She had absolutely, there was no color in her eyes. It was like so, it was blank. So it was all white. It was all white, yeah. And by the time she got closer and closer up towards the stage, and the parents started to see the creative power that was taking place, and God was actually created eyeballs. And by the time she comes up, I have the pictures where she's actually looking at me, and then she has the biggest grin on her face. <laughs> and she's just smiling. And, and, and just to see the parents in an area where they've never had Jesus before, when they are watching her, looking at me and looking around and seeing for the first time in her life. That's when you can start to see how love looks like. You could see it on her face. She had experiencing the love. Now, you've had three meetings recently in which everyone was healed. Yeah, and I think that it was a, a good appetite of things to come. Uh, this does not normally is happen. This, is this coming soon? I think it is coming soon. We got to taste of it. And the fun part of this for me is that there was no superstar. We don't know who prayed for whom. It was literally heaven that came down. And these three meetings was all in the Philippines. We had a team there and every person that we prayed for got healed. And we had blind eyes, we had people that was paraplegic, we had tumors that fell off people's bodies, but a whole team of 20 some Americans that was there. We don't know who prayed for whom. All we knew was that afterwards we were trying to see who do we need to pray for? Right, <laughs> the presence of God is getting so strong on this set. You need to pray the Father's blessing and pray for an impartation of God's love. I want him to pray that right for you. Yes, you. You are looking at me right now. I'm looking at you. I want him to pray that for you right now. I just want to remind you that uh, the Father, he loves you. He likes you and delights in you and you are his happy thought. And I just want to release right now a impartation of the same love that I experienced in year 2000. You are and your daddies, you're his beloved son or his beloved daughter. And the father says, I love you. I love you. And I'm well pleased with you. I just ask now, Father, that your love is going to go deeper than it has ever gone before. And that any area in your life that is not comfortable with love, that is not comfortable with love, that the love will touch those area and that you will be free. I release a healing to that orphan heart and I release that you're gonna get a glorious homecoming and you're gonna live a life like you have a home, a place of security, love, value, and purpose. Just receive right now. And it's going to be, it's going to be waves that goes up and down your body. And it actually brings healing right now, physically speaking. Whoa, I just feel it with the lungs. There's people with problems with the lungs and you can just feel it right now. It's just loosening up, asthma, just breathe in and breathe out right now and you're going to just sense it all over the place. People are just being released. It's just the love of God touching you. 
And I see somebody also, right now it is a, you're deaf, probably about 80% in the right ear. Just start to listen and just snap your fingers and you're gonna to start to hear sounds. It is taking place right now. It is just the love of God touching you. He loves you, He likes you, He delights in you. You're His happy thought. What is God's heart for the people that are watching and, and just we're praying for? What is God's heart for them? I believe that God uh, wants relationship. God wants a family. He, he wants sons and daughters. He don't want uh, people to gather around an orphanage just hoping that the fathers may be going to visit now and then. He wants a place of habitation. He, he, you said something interesting. He doesn't want an orphanage. He wants a family. We, we have a, a Jewish word. It's called mishpacha. That means family. That's why God came. He wants to restore the Garden of Eden in the atmosphere, mm. the Garden of Heaven in the atmosphere that we're living in right now. This is the time to know Father God. This is the time to know the love of Father God. This is the time to experience the heart of Father God. Oh, does He love you. God loves you because Jesus made you kosher, because Jesus made you clean, so you can come into the presence of God. You, me, life, <laughs> what a privilege. You can have your religion. I want to be in the presence of God. I want the Garden of Eden in my life. I want to hear God's voice and only do what I see my Heavenly Father doing from His love. When Leif Hetland received God's baptism of love, it transformed his marriage, his relationship with his children, and revolutionized his ministry. Now he wants you to receive the baptism of love and healing. Call now and get this two-part audio CD teaching by Leif Hetland, Healing the Orphan Spirit. Yours for a donation of $24. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1367. Through Leif's teaching, you will learn to discern the signs that you or someone you love has an orphan spirit. Understand that the baptism of love is the answer to the orphan spirit. Get set free from anger, impatience, frustration, and failure. Transform your relationships with family, friends, and others. Enter into a deep intimacy with Daddy God. Hear God voice and experience His love. Watch the heavens open with signs, wonders, and miracles. And Leif speaks an impartation to you for the baptism of love. We pour love in, and when love moves in, fear moves out. And when people are free from fear, the very root of this orphan heart is being broken, and they become a beautiful, beloved son and daughter, and they live their life that way. Don't miss out on getting this two-part audio CD teaching by Leif Etland, Healing the Orphan Spirit. Yours for a donation of $24. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 1367. Call or you can write to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. Post Office Box 1918, Brunswick, Georgia 31521. Please specify offer number 1367 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural, when my guest plays his violin, outrageous miracles take place, like supernatural plastic surgery. One lady had all of her wrinkles disappear. 